Welcome to Fundamentals of Telecommunications, Module 11, Data Network Connectivity. I'm Ted Chandler, CIS instructor. In previous modules, you learned about the ways in which computers connect with data networks, how networks connect with each other, and you learn about transmission media and other basic network building blocks in understanding networks. This module explains the active electronics associated with networks and uses the OSI model as a guide, beginning with the physical layer. By the end of this module, you should have a complete view of basic data networking. So let's take a look at what we'll be covering in this online module on data network connectivity. In this module, you will learn to first explain how NICs operate, then list the most common types of NICs, followed by being able to describe the purpose and operation of hubs and repeaters. On completion of this module, you will also be able to describe the purpose and operation of bridges and switches, explain how routers connect dissimilar networks, identify other layer 3 connectivity devices and understand their uses, describe how remote users can connect to a LAN or a WAN via a modem, and finally, you will be able to identify the components necessary for access and carrier network connectivity. You are already familiar with functions that occur at the physical layer. The devices that manage these functions are called network interface cards or NICs. NICs enable workstations and other nodes to connect to a network. They come in many different types and form factors depending on the network access method, transmission speed, and computer interface. Because NICs perform signaling and data framing, they belong to the physical and data link layers of the OSI model. They basically are a circuit board used to connect a device to a system board and act as transceivers for workstations, servers, connectivity devices, and peripherals on a network. They also perform data transmission in a format that other network nodes can interpret, receive and interpret encoded data from the network, and assemble data frames during transmission and disassemble data frames during reception. Repeaters and hubs belong to the physical layer of the OSI model. They do not interpret data, but simply regenerate a signal along a segment. Hubs often connect multiple points in a work group fashion. They are inexpensive and generally have been phased out in lieu of more intelligent switches. Bridges belong to the data link layer of the OSI model. They can make decisions about where to direct data based on the MAC address in the data frames header. A bridge keeps a filtered database so that it knows to discard a packet if it belongs to the same segment from which it was issued or forward it to another segment. Bridges have one input port and one output port and can separate a network into two different collision domains. Traditional data switches also belong to the data link layer of the OSI model. They can assign each port its own communication channel, thus creating many separate collision domains. Switches are often used to create virtual local area networks, or VLANs. VLANs are logically distinct networks within networks, which includes a group of nodes and excludes other nodes. VLANs can be created across more than one switch or even multiple networks. I'll talk more about VLANs shortly. Routers operate at layer 3, or the network layer, of the OSI model. Their main function is to interpret logical addresses and, based on that information, direct the data to destination or other networks over the fastest path possible. In dynamic routing, 
the router automatically calculates the best path between two nodes and accumulates this information in a routing table. In static routing, at least some of the path is manually coded into the router's configuration. Routers use routing protocols to communicate with each other. Examples of routing protocols include Routing Information Protocol, or RIP, for IP and IPX. It fact is in only the numbers of hops between nodes when determining a path from one point to another. Open Shortest Path First, or OSPF, for IP, uses more complex algorithms for determining best paths. Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, for IP, IPX, and Apple Talk, offers the benefits of supporting multiple protocols and limiting unnecessary network traffic between routers. Border gateway protocols, or BGP for IP, are the routing protocols for Internet backbones. Routers also can perform a number of other functions, including filtering out broadcast transmissions to alleviate network congestion, preventing certain types of traffic from getting to a network, enabling customized segregation and security, supporting simultaneous local and remote connectivity, providing higher network fault tolerance through redundant components such as power supplies and network interfaces, monitoring network traffic and issue statistics to a database, and, and finally, routers can diagnose internal or other connectivity problems and trigger alarms. A firewall is a specialized computer, typically a router, but possibly a workstation running special software that selectively filters or blocks traffic between networks. A firewall relies on a combination of hardware and software to determine what packet it should accept and which to reject. Gateways are combinations of network hardware and software that connects at least two dissimilar kinds of networks, such as data networks with the PSTN for voice, video, and data transmission on the long-haul network. They operate at multiple layers of the OSI model and run on servers, workstations, or mainframe computers. There are a number of different gateways depending upon the application. They include email gateway, which translates messages from one type of email system to another, internet gateway, which allow and manage access between LANs and, in, and the Internet, a LAN gateway, which allows segments of a LAN running different protocols, network access methods, or transmission types to communicate with each other, a voice data gateway, which allows a data network to issue data signals over a voice network, and finally, a wireless gateway, which integrate a wireline network with a wireless network. A remote network connectivity enables a geographically distant node to uh, 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 network and perform functions as if it were directly attached. Several remote connections exist, including direct dial to a remote access server, in which the client uses a dial-in software supplied with its operating system, such as RAS, which comes with Windows 2000 and 2003 server, to connect to a remote access server on the LAN. Another method is to direct dial to a host workstation in which the remote client uses a dial-in software supplied with its operating system to connect to a workstation that is directly attached to the LAN. And finally, connection via the Internet in which the client first connects to the Internet then connects to a private network. A modem not only modulates and demodulates signals, but also performs data compression, error correction, and data buffering. The majority of modem, of modem standards 
currently set are set by the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU. Typically, standards set data rates for other and other features and performance, such as the modem standard V.90 defines 56 kilobits per second asymmetrical transmission in which one of the modems is assumed, assumed to be using a digital line. V.92 improves upon V.90 by increasing the upstream transmission rate to a maximum of 48 kilobits per second. Modems may be internal and adapter card or external using, for example, PC card or USB interfaces. A virtual private network, VPN, allows an organization to carve out a private WAN over public transmission facilities. VPNs may use one of several different methods of securing data between locations. They are an economical solution to creating long-distance WANs versus leasing dedicated circuits from a telecommunications carrier. Previously, you learned that telephone subscribers access the PSTN via the local loop. More and more, local loops are being used for not only telephone calls, but also for data transmission, as in the VPN connections discussed previously. Digital Loop Carrier, DLC, is a technique for delivering digital signals to a high volume of le or local exchange carrier sub subscribers over a combination of new and old local loop infrastructure. DLC uses multiplexing to consolidate multiple subscriber lines into fewer high-capacity digital connections that lead to the local exchange carrier's uh, central office. DLC installations typically rely on remote terminals to bring fiber optic connections from the central office closer to the customer. This decreases the length of copper in the local loop, saving installation costs and simplifying maintenance. An access node is the point at which a user's traffic enters or exits a carrier's network. Many types of devices qualify as access nodes. For an example, in a carrier's central office, an access node may be a digital cross-connect system, or DCS, which is a switch or device that connects uh, multiple digital lines with other digital lines, similar to an analog cross-connect, but with more functions spanning higher levels of the OSI model. Another example is an integrated access device, or an IAD, which are, these are more sophisticated devices that operate along all of the OSI model layers and integrate a number of functions into one device, such as supplying digital cross connections, accepting transmissions from different types of networks, and accommodates both voice and data connections, interpreting data at, higher, at the highest OSI levels. In summary, examples of active electronics in a network include workstations, servers, NICs, hubs, switches, bridges, routers, and gateways. NICs enable workstations, servers, and other nodes to connect to a network. Routers interpret logical addresses and direct the data packages to its destination, such as the Internet. Gateways are combinations of software and hardware that connect two dissimilar networks or systems. Virtual private networks, or VPNs, allow an organization to carve out a private WAN over a public transmission facility. This completes Module 11, Data Network Connectivity. Please take Quiz 11 before going on to Module 12, Internet Authorities and Standards.